Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 27th of June. Indian Prime Minister Modi attends G7 Outreach Summit in Germany. Now homeless Afghan earthquake survivors struggle to rebuild flights. And Crisis hit Sri Lanka, shut schools, urges work from home to save fuel. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday attended the G7 outreach meeting in Germany along with heads of Indonesia, South Africa, Senegal and Argentina. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the global economic fallout such as soaring energy and food prices has dominated this year's G7 summit of the leaders of Germany, the United States, France, Italy, Canada, Japan and Britain. During the outreach summit, PM Modi highlighted India's efforts for green growth, clean energy, sustainable lifestyles and global well-being. India's foreign ministry spokesperson informed. The outreach summit mainly focused on climate protection and the global food crisis resulting from the Russia-Ukraine war. During his two-day visit, PM Modi was also scheduled to hold separate bilateral meetings. Earlier on Sunday, he addressed the Indian diaspora in Munich and called for usage of affordable and environment-friendly energy. The flood situation in India's northeastern Assam state witnessed a slight improvement on Monday. However, over 2.2 million people still remain affected. Officials said as relief operations were underway. At least 127 people have lost their lives in the deluge since late May. The flood situation in India's northeastern Assam state is showing signs of improvement with the water level of rivers maintaining a receding trend, while over 2.2 million people still remain affected, authorities said on Monday. The toll due to rain-related incidents reached 127 after five deaths were reported on Sunday in the deadly flooding since late May. The situation in Silchar town has, however, continued to be grim as large parts remain inundated. Authorities have deployed rescue boats and Air Force helicopters to drop food and other supplies to cut off communities across the state. A doctor in Morigaon said cases of waterborne diseases were being reported among locals, including diarrhea and skin related problems. The monsoon brings heavy rain and floods to Assam every year, when rivers swell with waters often busting their banks. But extreme weather pattern has become more frequent and environmentalists warn the climate change could lead to even more serious disasters. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's JU Aif party chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman has said former Premier Imran Khan was not ousted through any foreign conspiracy as he claims, but it was him who gathered all parties to vote him out. Rahman blamed Khan's PTI-led government had come into power through rigging and illegal means. Pakistan Democratic Movement and JUIF party chief Mulana Fazlur Rahman has said that PTI chairman Imran Khan was not removed from power through any foreign conspiracy, as he claims. But it was him who was responsible for the former Prime Minister's ouster. Imran Khan, who was ousted in a parliamentary vote in April, has been demanding fresh general elections, claiming that the United States conspired to topple his government along with the leaders of the then-opposition, a charge Washington denies. He has also demanded a judicial probe into the ouster. Addressing a seminar in Islamabad, Rahman censured Imran Khan 
and said that first he kept waving an alleged threat letter before the masses and then resorted to saying that his life was in danger, which was all lie. He blamed Khan's PTI-led government had come into power through rigging and illegal means. I said that commission is not तो फिर कमीशन इस बात पर बिठाएंगे कि तुम्हें इत्तेदार में लाने वाले कौन थे तुम्हें कौन पर मुसल्लत करने वाले बुवत कौन थे मीनवाइल पीटीआई चेयरमैन इमरान खान ऑन संडे किक स्टार्टेड कैंपेनिंग फॉर द जुलाई 17 बाय पोल्स इन पंजाब प्रोविंस एंड टोल्ड हिज सपोर्टर्स द इलेक्शंस वर नॉट जस्ट पॉलिटिक्स बट अ जिहाद और रिलीजियस वॉर टू विन रियल इंडिपेंडेंस फॉर पाकिस्तान फ्रॉम रूलर्स ऑफ द इंपोर्टेड गवर्नमेंट the by-elections will predict the results of the next general elections, he said. Moving on, prominent Baloch activist Munir Mengal has raised concern over the ongoing rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan in the wake of CPEC, the China-Pakistan economy corridor. He said the indigenous people have been completely kept bereft of the benefits of the CPEC, while the military establishment has crossed all limits of atrocities to suppress dissenting voices. Munir Mengal, the president of Baloch Voice Association, has said that CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, is not benefiting the indigenous people in Balochistan, while the military establishment has been using all demonic actions to suppress dissenting voices. Mengal said that the Pakistani military has continued to target the locals and activists who oppose the CPEC. He said security forces enter the houses of people anytime without any permit and abduct and extrajudicially kill them. He accused that Islamabad has crossed all limits of atrocities and residents of Balochistan are being tortured and deprived of every basic right. On the name of CPEC, so basically the state has made that region a complete uh, military uh, garrison from uh, every point anybody who wants to enter at Gawadar or uh, Thurbat, so, so he has to pass uh, more than a dozen of uh, checkpoints. Uh, it means that that is land, that territory is not for the local peoples. Activists blame that there has been a sharp rise in human rights violations in Balochistan since the launch of the multi-billion CPEC project, which has only brought death and destruction for the local people instead of economic opportunities. Thousands have been internally displaced over the years. In news from Afghanistan, survivors of an earthquake which killed more than 1,000 people and left thousands homeless in Afghanistan were seen salvaging belongings and trying to rebuild their lives days after the devastating incident. At least 2,000 injured and 10,000 homes were destroyed in the 6.1 magnitude earthquake last Wednesday. Days after a massive earthquake toppled homes and killed more than 1,000 people in eastern Afghanistan, survivors were busy salvaging belongings and trying to rebuild their homes and lives. Survivors said they were trying to cope but there was almost no aid and no help coming their way. Meena Gul from Kalizal, a village in the hardest hit district of Barmal said, we have no home and neither have we received tents so far. اوس مونږ دا هیله ده دلته مونږ د کور ویجړ شوی دی ماشومان دي زنانه دي مونږ کور نه لرو خیمې نه لرو نوره نو تر اوسه پیرا مونږ ته خیمې رسېدلې دي ماشومان دي زنانه دي هلته بهر په ټټونو کې ژوند کوي نو تشنبونه شته نه نور څه شته چې مونږ په کفن شو د اوسېدو ځای مو نشته the 6.1 magnitude quake that struck the east of the country early last Wednesday destroyed or damaged 10,000 homes and injured about 2,000 people, straining the country's fragile health system and posing a major test for the ruling Taliban administration. <laughs> The authorities in Afghanistan have called on international governments to roll bank sanctions and lift a freeze on central bank assets following the earthquake.
Thousands affected by a deadly earthquake in eastern Afghanistan are in need of clean water and food and are at risk of disease, an Afghan health ministry official said on Sunday, days after a UN agency warned of cholera outbreak in the region. In news from Sri Lanka, the military which has already been deployed at fuel stations to quell unrest in Sri Lanka handed tokens on Monday to people queuing for petrol amid the fuel shortage. The government has told employees to work from home until further notice, while schools have been shut for a week in the commercial capital of Colombo and surrounding areas. Queues for petrol in Sri Lanka grew longer on Monday amid a severe fuel shortage in the nation battling its worst economic crisis in seven decades, while schools shut in Colombo and public employees were asked to work from home. Troops handed tokens out to motorists waiting in line, which were meant to hold queue positions when fuel becomes available. Mama petrol said dege, no nagila gas said dege, daru den nagila boom tel said dege. Me ekakar leben ni na. Ude ina mulu paula thama kadeng kanda vela thi ani. Paula kada me dawasol kade king kanda pulvand. Me kada vaga gya utte na manam danna me kamukad karan me golu gya le ekko me karan do pulvand ke ne kuda den de gya la. Power and Energy Minister Kanchan Vijasekra said on Sunday that stockpiles stood at about 9,000 tons of diesel and 6,000 tons of petrol, but no fresh shipments are due. In the past two months, Sri Lanka largely received fuel via a $500 million Indian credit line, which ran out in mid-June. A petrol shipment due last Thursday failed to arrive and no fresh shipments are yet scheduled, Vijasekra said. However, Sri Lanka also implemented a 12 to 22 percent fuel price increase in the early hours on Sunday. Meanwhile, a top delegation from the U.S. Treasury and State Departments met with Sri Lankan leaders in Colombo on Monday for talks as the island nation seeks overseas assistance to find a way out of its worst economic crisis in decades. The delegation, which is led by U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Treasury for Asia, Robert Keproth first met with Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, then held a meeting with Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. The delegation arrived in Colombo for the three-day visit on Sunday. According to the U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka's website, the delegation will meet with officials, economists and international organizations and will explore the most effective ways for the U.S. to help Sri Lanka out of its current economic crisis. A team from the International Monetary Fund is already in Sri Lanka for talks on a possible $3 billion bailout package. A tree fair is underway in Bangladesh capital Dhaka with an array of topiary plants providing a picturesque site for nature lovers. With the theme of living sustainably in harmony with nature, the month-long fair called National Tree Fair is the largest of its kind in Bangladesh. It had a flying start this year with many visitors after a two-year COVID-19 hiatus aimed to promote and encourage gardening and planting trees among the capital dwellers. The fair is a flagship program of the forest department under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Traders from all over the country are showcasing their collections, among which indoor plants, fruits, flowers and decorative plants, exquisite topiary plants of various kinds from abroad. The fair will continue till 5th of July. Members of LGBT community on Sunday took out pride parades in parts of India and demanded inclusivity and other rights. The month of June is usually celebrated as Pride Month by the community to commemorate years of struggle for civil rights as well as accomplishments of LGBT individuals. <music> Scores of members of the LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community in India's eastern Bhumneshwar city demanded inclusivity as they participated in a pride parade on Sunday. People from various age groups, genders and nationalities came under a common pride flag to celebrate LGBT pride as they shook legs to the beat of drums. The participants sang out slogans, I am a lesbian, it's okay, I am a gay, it's okay. They demanded marital rights, right to adoption, right to property and better surrogacy laws for the people of the LGBT community. It's only 377 which was repelled. We are, we are yet to receive rights to get married, get uh, t t inherit property, to adopt children. Surrogacy laws are also not the best in our country and they don't allow for same-sex couples to adopt, or, uh, adopt a surrogate mother. 
Meanwhile, members of the LGBT community also gathered in southern Chennai city to demand equal rights. India's Supreme Court in 2018 struck down Section 377, a colonial era law that outlawed same-sex relations, sparking hopes of equality for the country's LGBT population. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.